earlier this year, HMD, the stewards of the Nokia brand, released the Nokia 9 PureView and really showed off that they could elevate their smartphone photography chops to the next level. Maybe not the biggest success financially, but it did prove that there is a desire within this company to do smartphone cameras well, and I think the proof of that lies further in devices like the new Nokia 7.2, which we just checked out. It's a beautiful phone. It comes in this really sweet sort of cyan green finish. It's partially polycarb, but it's partially aluminum, so it does have a really light, sturdy feel to it. And there's a really impressive screen, which we'll get to in a bit, but really though, the big draw is the camera around back. It's a triple camera system that combines a 48 megapixel primary sensor with Zeiss optics with an eight megapixel wide sensor and a depth sensor for making sure your photos are appropriately full of bokeh when you want them. You probably wouldn't want to shoot at full 48 megapixel resolution, but you can. Generally though, you'd want it so every four pixels on that sensor is treated as one in a process known as pixel bidding. So you do get really nice, bright 12 megapixel photos. And just testing it for a little bit here, I was actually really surprised by the clarity of these photos. And that's especially true of some of the bokeh effects HMB has worked in here. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the Nokia brand has always had a long-running relationship with Zeiss. And part of bringing Zeiss optics to the Nokia 7.2 is making sure that some of those classic bokeh Zeiss patterns are replicated in this smartphone. So there are at least three filters that are inspired by Zeiss bokeh effects in older lenses. And they do actually look pretty good. I have tested devices like the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, and even then, I actually kind of think the Nokia 7.2 might have a slight edge there. It's really, really quite impressive. And portraits just in general happen to look really, really crisp, really vivid in a way that I wasn't really expecting out of a phone that will eventually cost something like $349 when it lands in the US. I would not sleep on this smartphone camera and I'm really looking forward to testing it further. So about that screen I mentioned earlier, we're looking at a 6.3 inch full HD plus display. And there are a few extra tricks here that elevate it from what you'd expect from a $350 phone. There is a built-in color sensor that will allow the phone to kind of understand what light it's currently in and change the way white looks so it looks more white to you wherever you happen to be. It's a trick we've seen in everything from smartphones to iPads and it actually goes a long way in making this phone and the screen actually look more pleasant to look at for long periods of time. I should also point out that this is a $350 phone that you will be able to use to upconvert all of your standard definition video to HDR footage, which is probably going to work okay. We didn't get a chance to play with it too, too thoroughly, but I have to wonder how the Snapdragon 660 and really everything poking away inside this device is going to handle these conversions on the fly, which is what HMB says it's going to do. That said, I mean, based off of our limited hands-on time with this thing, the screen is actually surprisingly nice. I wouldn't put it up there, obviously, with a Galaxy Note 10 or a OnePlus 7 Pro, which is available for just about twice the price of this phone, but for 350 bucks, I mean, I consider me very impressed by this whole package end-to-end. If $350 is a little more than what you wanted to spend on a smartphone and you could live without some of these features, especially the camera, you might want to look at something like the Nokia 6.2, which will launch in the fall and for about 209 euro. Obviously, that's the international price, but HMD has told us that this device will come to the United States. And for better or worse, it looks exactly like the Nokia 7.2. The only difference is there isn't a Zeiss logo for the optics on the back. It doesn't come in that really sweet sort of dark sea green finish, and it doesn't do really the same camera tricks at all as the 7.2. If you want the camera, if you care about a surprisingly good photographic experience out of a cheap phone, 7.2 is the way to go. I think overall, Nokia has put together a pretty solid package for people who don't want to spend a ton of money on a phone. No matter which of these devices you go for, you can expect Android One, you can expect frequent software updates, and a pretty solid baseline of performance. The screen stuff, the build quality, and in the case of the 7.2, that really slick camera, that's just icing on the cake. There's obviously a lot more news coming out of the IFA show in Berlin, so stay tuned to Engadget for all the news as it happens.